Welcome back, gang. It's Delty from DeltiasGaming.com. And wow, there are some massive changes to the Elder Scrolls Online that were proposed on the public test server today. It's really, frankly, too much to go over in a single video, but I wanted to share with you my opinion on the changes after testing it off stream and seeing the results for myself. Lost Depths DLC and Update 35 are set to launch on August 22nd, and the public test server, again, has massive overhaul to core mechanics and classes. I'm going to leave out the majority of them and do a deeper dive per class later. And these proposed changes are not final. So what do we have? The two big ones that we kind of already knew about from last Friday is light attack weaving. Light and heavy attacks now deal flat amount of damage then rather than scaling from your highest offensive stat. Talks about the base damage being 2,250 base damage. Now, the real interesting thing here is melee attacks deal that base damage while range deals 10% less. This alone could be its own separate video, but just in case you don't know, typically in MMOs, melee has more risk. Therefore, they have more reward. In almost every other MMO I've played, you get more damage playing in melee. I don't know if that's the reason why they did this or not, but this is why I think they did this. So that alone, huge, huge change. But the base damage is also a big change. From what they posted previously, you can expect about a 6 to 10% damage in light attack weaving because of this. This also makes the Empower buff, Templar, Solar Barrage, and some of the gear sets extraordinarily useful. More on that later. And it talks about the fully charged heavy attacks doing base damage and multiplied by the cast time and cooldown. Again, 10% for range. If that weren't enough, here is the second game changer, and that's buff duration. Quote, adjusted player damage over time abilities to be generally following the following rules. Abilities now last 20 seconds in duration up for 10. Almost all dots now tick on a two second frequency rather than two seconds if they were single target in one second if they were AOE. Abilities now deal roughly two times the amount of damage that a normal spammable does, such as Lava Whip or Concealed Weapon, up from 1.5. Since they will now take longer to deal this damage, this will result in approximately a 33% overall DPS decrease for damage over time while making them more worthwhile in longer fights and easier to keep up. Most costs have been untouched, reducing the overall cost per second of these abilities by half. Individual notes for affected abilities will not be listed under the source skill line. So that's an enormous amount of changes. I'm going to go over what this actually feels like, both doing content and a parse dummy. But I want to be fair to the developers first, and I want to play a one minute clip from them and their perspective on what their intent was and why they were making this change. Trying to do is target a lot of long longer term issues in the game, um, mainly dealing with a lot of damage production and uh, a skill gap that our game has. There's a lot of mastery in ESO and it's what it makes, one of the things that makes it particularly satisfying to kind of dig yourself into and really explore the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of the game. Um, but because of that gap and a lot of what ends up happening from that, it's really hard to get uh, a strong balance of accommodation for a wide variety of players. And what we're trying to do is kind of like rein that in so that we can do a better job of making sure that we can make content for everyone and that people can participate more and have more natural progression throughout our game so that they can dig into that mastery and it feels kind of natural. So that was the developer's intent behind this. And I think they're trying to draw in new players and they're trying to get, make the game a lot more accessible and easy to do basic things that probably a lot of us that have been playing for a gazillion years and a million hours take for granted. So what I did was I ran Veteran Vatisham Arena on stream and then I did a bunch of parsing off stream. Because if you're like me and you heard these changes, it's very gut wrenching. But I wanted to get some facts and some data. So first off, as a player, I consider myself very average when it comes to PvE. I don't parse all the time. I don't do that high of parsing. I don't know all the tricks and the ins and outs of its own mini game. On my Magpar, I think the highest I've ever got was 92,000 using Kinra's and all those fancy sets. So I set my character up with the thought in mind for the average player using some pretty easy to get a hold sets. I didn't change my bars to be a Cific parsing setup. So it would be something you would actually take into a dungeon for the average player. So I use a two piece monster helm, the Rhineth, Order's Wrath five piece on the body at all times, deadly strikes on my jewelry and weapons. And then I use a back bar Inferno Maelstrom Arena. Also something to take into account, there's massive class changes. One specifically the Templar that when I saw for the first time, I was not thrilled. No, this is jabs. What? That's a noodle. They are 
swinging a noodle! But when I actually started using the ability and parsing, it actually channels much faster, so it's much easier to weave. And that's what I found in the public test server. So when I went to do this, I had three back bar buffs, Solar Barrage, Blazing Spear, and Unstable Wall. And I usually cast Unstable Wall at the very end to clip the animation and come to my front. Then I have Purifying Light, six seconds, and it's still six seconds on the public test server, jabs, and then execute right around 25% health. I was actually shocked because I did a little bit more DPS, believe it or not, 1,000 on the PTS than I did on live. And I did other classes too, but what I found initially just doing my PLAR was it was much simpler and much easier and I had way better resource sustain. So when I say better resource sustain, I was casting these back bar debuffs and or buffs every 20 seconds rather than every 10. My brain wanted to go back there about every seven to eight seconds and recast them, but I had to force myself to look at the timers and not do so. so with a full parse gear set up and a lot more practice, I could probably push 100,000 on the live server, but this was pretty consistent. And there's probably some RNG with Narayaneth, my crit, my light attack weaving, and so on. But you can expect roughly the same for my level of play with the Magpar, which is just sitting there throttling down, puncturing sweeps is what I love to do. A higher end player is probably going to see a much greater change, but for me, it was so, so much simpler. That also can be a big negative for people is that you don't have the extreme element of maintaining these buffs and debuffs and really not missing any light attacks. It's what people live for, the mastery of ESO's combat. And I can see a huge part of the population, or maybe a small part, really not liking this. But I can also see the pros and making this extremely easy to parse with and much more applicable for the average player, especially on a Plar. But the reduction in the cast and channel time of the Templar and the new animation, which I originally didn't like, actually was pretty easy to do. And the results were kind of shocking. It was much easier, roughly the same damage. But let's move on and talk about some other classes. I also took the Stam Nightblade back and I was using something a little bit off, but Reliquins on the body, Pillars of Nern, and then a two-piece Slime Crawl and another one crags very odd setup but something i just had on my bags both on live server and pts i didn't want to spend the time to get all full par setup because that's just not me on live server i did 86,000, and on the pts i got 82,000. so it wasn't a huge difference now the night blade uniquely got a huge buff in having their main spammable surprise attack always crit from the flank and killer's blade hitting a lot harder and even with those two positive chains on the pts i still got about 4,000 dps less again you probably have a wider gap the better you are at parsing the better you are at the combat light attack weaving and so on but for newbies gaming wasn't a huge decrease, but it was a lot easier to maintain, especially on the back bar using Carve and Stampede, Twisting Path. I have a lot of dots on the Nightblade. And then moving on to one that took a massive change, and that's the Stamdom. I hit 85,000 on live with Reliquins, Pillars of Nern, those two uh, one pieces, and I dropped down to 74,000 on the PTS. One of the reasons why is Warden got a nerf, and that is Cutting Dive does no longer stacks bleeds. And that was the issue here, as I think some classes, which I didn't get to the Dragonite, I didn't get to the Sorcerer, are going to see a major dip, while other classes with really good main spambles, the Templar and the Nightblade, roughly the same without that big, huge fall off. So wildly different per class. Stamina and Magic, not so much. It's really just taking into account those class abilities. But the Stamdom specifically, with Deep Fissure on my front bar on the live server, required a three-second cast. Think about, like, the Necro. You really you have to babysit this a lot using your blast bones or on the samdom deep fissure and i love that gameplay because it's really fast whenever you come to your front bar bang you have to fire off a deep fissure whenever you go back you're doing one or two globals going up in front and bang casting a deep fissure well deep fissure got changed and firing off two times taking much longer to do so so it really lowers the action per minute, making the Stamdom not very fun to play, really, and uh, kind of lowering my drive to play that class. But for the average player, it can be really good because you don't have to all the complex, and if you miss something by a second, your DPS isn't going to dramatically dip. And then lastly, I also did Veteran Vatishram Hollows, where you're seeing some of this footage. And my solo mag part, it wasn't the same gear, right? I wasn't fully focused. The PTS just did launch, but I did die twice, which I normally never die. 
and I got a significantly less score, so about 30 minutes. So I'd probably be at around 24, 25 minutes if I was fully focused using Sea Serpent's Coil and all that stuff. To keep in mind on the live server, I got down to 20 minutes before using my mag part. But again, I was fully focused, all the gear was golded out, all the right skills and I was ready to go dialed in. In that kind of context to put in percentage base, I would feel probably about a 10% difference inside the actual content. Meaning damage was a little bit lower, the bosses were taking a little bit longer. How I knew this, when I would go inside the portal specifically, I would come out and the boss would have right around 30 to 35% health. With my fully optimized build, I would basically skip all the mechanics and come out about 22% health. Just beam the boss down, bang, go into the next portal, I'm good to go. So in content felt a lot different than a parse dummy. And I'm sure that will feel the same per class in whatever your level of play style. So what does this all lead? What does this all mean? I think my original thought process on this is still true after testing this. One, it's not final, but two, I think for the average player, someone who picks up ESO is not a sweat lord, doesn't live on a parse dummy, isn't God's gift to the game, you're going to notice a little bit DPS loss, but you're going to notice also that it's much easier to play the game. I think who this really hurts is the top end players that really love to do the parsing and live for the combat in ESO. Will this bring the gap closer? I really don't think so. And the reason why is one percenters, top end people will always rise to the top. They'll find a new method, whether it's loading up on damage amps to their main spammable or something, they'll find a way to work around this. Just give them enough time. The average player might enjoy this a lot more, and I can see PvP being a lot easier for people. They nerfed a lot of cheesy sets like Savage Werewolf, these heavy attack Dragonite builds, and that's one of the issues with PvP is that it takes so long to get really good at rotating your buffs in a two-bar build that it's hard to maintain your armor, do the proper heals over time, and so forth, so this actually might be a lot easier for people and might raise the time to kill. We did a couple duels, and my Magpar basically felt the same. I didn't have my money stone so my my magic sustain was tank i was even using iron blood that got nerfed more on that later against a really good night blade and it felt pretty much the same i can foresee pvp being easier for the average player and hopefully time to kill is a little bit higher to let more and more people enjoy pvp without getting one shot constantly especially with oaken souls being adjusted again so much to cover in one specific video but this is kind of what i see not a parse warrior i'm an average player and then roughly, you know, three, 5,000 DPS change. If you're fully optimized and live on a parse dummy, this could be a huge nerf to you. But the combat is really what's gonna change. It's gonna be more reliant on main spambles, less reliant on damage over time, and bar swapping constantly. And I think this is the premise that Elder Scrolls Online is going for. But here's the real issue, and going back to the intro, is this really gonna attract and retain new players? I don't think so, if I'm being completely honest with you. Reason why is, Elder Scrolls Online is known for a couple things. One is jabs, which now has changed. Two is, it's known for constant major overhauls of the game every three to four months. And that has not changed. In fact, that's going along the lines of why people I think stay away from the game, just like me staying away from Destiny 2. I go play Destiny 2 and I load up the menu and the user interface. It's extremely foreign. I have no idea where to go, what to do to get the gear. And then when I have the gear, I don't know what the mods are, what's best in slot mods, nothing. It's kind of a game that if you're not in the know, you're just foreign. And that's more or less what ESO has become. You need to rely on content creators like me or others, which is nice, to find out what are people using, why, what skills, what gear, what champion points. It's very hard and frustrating coming back to the game every three or four months. A good metaphor that we can use for this is building a road. If you have a damage busted up road, you gotta get in there, tear up the road, build a new one, and get that really nice fresh road. That's great if you don't have to redo the road every 10 years. If you have to redo the road, bust it up, get in there, dig it out, make a huge mess, go down to one lane, and you do that every three or four months, and now you actually push away new players, you push away those returning players that just wanna come and enjoy the game because it's too complex. 
it changes way too often for an MMO, and they're too radical of changes. I think they should have stepped this and done light heavy attack changes along with damage over time, and then did the radical class changes. Or instead, they throw it all at us at once, and we end up with probably a change, maybe the second biggest group of changes in the game's history, and I'm not exaggerating. Here, read the patch notes. It's longer than Moby Dick. But this is what I think. Am I right? Am I wrong? Leave me a comment in the description below. Look, I love Elder Scrolls Online. I'm trying not to overreact and taking some time, a few hours off stream to sit there and beat on some dummies to go do some content. These are the early analysis points. It can change over time. And, you know, it might be a little bit easier. It might be less actions per minute. Some people that will be very attractive to, some people it won't. This game becomes, continues to become more like Skyrim with friends than it does doing an MMO with a lot of action. Again, two different sides of the coin here. What do you like and why? I'm still going to play Elder Scrolls Online. I love the people. I love creating content for it. I love tweaking and messing with the builds. Me as a content creator, though, it's sometimes frustrating going over these every three months, these huge deep dives. But hey, that's why you watch the channel, and I appreciate you continuing to watch. I'll keep you updated and try to deep dive through the gear set changes, through the class changes, and share with you relative information so that way when this launches on PC on August 22nd, you have the information to enjoy your builds, go back out, and do what you like to do, whether that's kill trash mobs, do hardcore trials and dungeons, or just fart around and do overland. Let's not forget, it's a game, and we'll get through this. Thanks for watching.